Welcome to a code report solution video. In this video, we're going to be covering the solution to the problem entitled Art of Balance from the Code Chef February 2019 Long Challenge. The problem states, let's call a string balanced if all characters that occur in this string occur in it the same number of times. You are given a string S. The string may only contain uppercase English letters. You may perform the following operation any number of times, including zero. Choose one letter in S and replace it by another uppercase English letter. Note that even if the replaced letter occurs in S multiple times, only the chosen occurrence of this letter is replaced. And we need to find the minimum number of operations required to convert the given string to a balanced string. And the constraints for this problem are going to be uh, that T, the number of test cases, is between uh, 1 and 10,000. S is going to be between 1 and a million. And we're guaranteed that the sum of S over all test cases won't exceed 5 million. And uh, we're also told that all the letters in S will be uppercase, so we don't need to worry about any of them being lowercase. So let's take a look at two of the examples that CodeChef provided us with. So here they are. At the top we have T equal to 2, the number of test cases, and then our two strings. So our first one, uh, the answer is 1, which means we can achieve a balanced string if we change only one of the letters. And we can see that pretty easily if we change uh, the A to a C or the C to an A. Uh, we're going to have each of the letters occurring the same number of times, which would be 2. So you can see here, if we change A, that gives us uh, A, B, A, B, which means A and B both occur two times. And for the last one, B, B, C, if we change the last letter to C, or the last letter C to B, we end up with only one letter obviously occurring the same number of times because uh, there's no other letters to compare to. And so the answer for this one is one as well. So this problem is pretty easy to understand. Um, but uh, due to the constraints of this problem, we need to figure out uh, an efficient way to figure out uh, how to find the minimum number of operations. And really the trick is uh, of this problem is that we need to know what number of characters to aim for. So in our second example, we're aiming for there only being one character. And in our first example, we're aiming uh, for there to be two characters at the end of the day, even though we started with three. Um, so, you know, depending on our string, the optimal number of char characters to aim for isn't clear. And the trick is that we can actually just test every single number of characters. So, uh, we know there's only 26 characters in the alphabet, so there's a hard limit there. And the number of characters that are valid are any number that are divisible into the number of characters in the string. So uh, for a four-character uh, string, the valid numbers are 1, 2, and 4. Uh, 3 is not valid because if we changed you know, um, the C to a B, there's no way that we could end up with uh, even or all of the uh, characters with the same frequency. Um, so the easiest way to show how we go through this is to just look at a more complicated example and to walk through it. So let's do that now. So here's our more complicated example. We have six characters in our string, and it's A, B, B, C, C, C. So the first thing we need to do is find the frequency of these characters. So A occurs once, B occurs two times, and uh, C occurs three times. And at this point, we don't even care about the characters anymore. All we care about is the frequency. So we can store these in a vector. And what we're going to want to do is sort these from greatest to smallest. So we sort of have a visualization of it as follows. And what we're going to do then is we're going to set a variable n equal to the length of our string, and then we're going to iterate with i equals 1, which is i being the number of characters that we're aiming for. So when i is equal to 1, we're basically going to convert this string to only have one character in it. And the way that's going to work is obviously we're going to want to change all of the other characters to the most common character, which in this case is c, which is represented by the first element in our reverse sorted vector. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to figure out by basically dividing n by i to how many occurrences of this uh, character we're going to have. So in this case, when i is equal to 1, it's a trivial case because we're just going to end up with converting every single character to the most common character, which is c in this case. So we divide n by i to get 6, 
And then because we're only looking at one character, we only want to look at one element of our vector. So this column right here, and basically what we're going to do is we're just going to take the difference between 6 and divided by i and the most uh, common frequency of our character, which is c in this case and is 3. And so in order to change this string to have all of one character, where that character is the most frequently occurring one, we'd need to change three other characters. The difference between this value here, 3, and n divided by i, which is 6, which gives us 3. So that's equivalent to changing the b, the b, and the a all to c's. Uh, so we'll set a local variable answer equal to 3 at this moment, and then we're going to test this for every single valid i, and then just take the minimum of those. So if we move on to the next uh, valid i, which is going to be 2, we're now looking at uh, the two most uh, frequently occurring characters, and we want to uh, get these frequencies to 3. So n divided by i at this point is 3. So that's basically saying uh, we want to take our c's and our b's and get them to match. And in order to do that, we basically only need to uh, change one character, and that's the a to a b. So you can visualize sort of a bar that's at our n divided by i line. So this is equal to 3. And so right now, one of our uh, characters already meets that criteria and one of them doesn't and so we just need to make this one match and so we're taking the difference once again so we're basically taking a cumulative difference at this point we go 3 minus 3 equals 0 uh, so that we put that in sort of a temporary and then uh, 3 minus 2 is equal to 1 and then so we add that to our 0 which gives us 1 and so then our answer at this point is 1 so in order to get our string to have uh, frequencies equal and to have two characters, i is equal to 2, we only have to change one, and that's the a here. And if we move on to our next case, um, that's going to be i equal to 3. Uh, you can visualize now, so n divided by i is equal to 2, so that means if we want there to be three characters, the frequency of those characters in order to fill up our string has to be 2. And so you can visualize this line moving down from 3 to 2. And at this point, um, it's sort of a little bit more complicated because previously all of our differences were below this n divided by i line. And when we have certain differences above our n divided by i line and certain differences below, we basically only want to take the maximum of the differences. So we want to sum all the differences above the line and sum all the differences below the line and then take the maximum of that. And the reason for that is that you can imagine if we had, you know, a longer string and then we had, you know, an E or a D, an E and an F. So we had a couple more one columns here. Whenever we have um, sort of matching differences above and below the line, they cancel out because say I had an extra character D here, um, or I guess we don't even need to consider the D. We can just look at the A and the C. So in this case, we're gonna be turning a C to an A at which point we will have uh, three characters, A, B, and C, all with frequency two times. Um, but we don't need to count both the A and the C. So we don't need to take the summation of what's above the line and below the line because when we uh, convert one of the C's to an A, that takes care of uh, the other operation. So there's a sort of symmetry across this N divided by I line and we only want to take the maximum. So if there's more or a greater difference below the n divided by i line or a greater difference above, we only want to take that because the uh, sort of subset that matches between these two, we don't need to double count because those are going to um, cancel each other out. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, and at this point, we're going to stop iterating because we're going to have a hard limit on our for loop on checking i to be the uh, minimum of the 26 characters in the alphabet, alphabet and the number of elements in our vector here. So because we only have three elements in our vector in terms of the original frequencies, we're going to stop iterating. And so at this point, our answer is going to be 1. And so th and there was two ways to do it. We can either change the a to this uh, the a to a b to get two characters in our final string, or we can change a c to an a to get uh, three different characters in our final string. Both work. Um, so hopefully that made sense. Uh, it's actually pretty um, not that difficult of a problem once you have the insight that you can sort of just brute force check every single you know target number of characters. Um, so with that being said, let's take a look at our solution. So here I've sort of avoided the um, boilerplate reading in the T and then looping for T test cases and then reading in S for each test case. And I'm just showing the uh, minimum operations method that we have here for solving the minimum number of operations uh, 
to get to a balanced string. Um, and so you can see here we're passing in by const reference our string, and at the top we're declaring a vector of integers dimension to be 26 elements, which is going to be the frequency of all our characters. So then we're looping through for each character in our string and just incrementing the corresponding count of that character by doing a minus uh, capital A. So that's going to map A to element 0, B to element 1, and so on and so forth. And then once we've done this, we have an erase if, which is just sort of a function that implements the uh, remove if erase idiom. And this lift equal is from a library from Rollbear, who I'll link to his talk below. He, get a, he gave a talk at Meeting C++ on functional programming, and uh, he provides a library with all these awesome sort of uh, function objects that you can use uh, with your algorithms instead of having to implement really common lambdas. Um, so the code for that, both the erase uh, remove if idiom and uh, his equal uh, function object, or it's more a lambda, I guess, uh, or it's both, um, are here. And he's using this sort of nasty macro stuff, but he explains in the video that it's necessary. Um, so I'm probably going to use these uh, function objects going forward. Uh, so it's good to know about. I'll link to both the GitHub um, repository and the video in the description down below. But back to our solution. This basically just removes all of the uh, elements in our vector or characters counts in our vector that were zero so that didn't exist and then we're going to reverse sort our array like we talked about and then we're just going to declare some locals n to be the size of our string uh, answer to be initialized to the maximum number of operations which uh, we're probably we're never going to hit obviously but we just need to initialize this to a large value seeing as we're finding the minimum and then m which is equal to the number of frequencies in our initial uh, vector v and so as we talked about in our solution, we're looping through. Uh, I here is sort of the target number of characters that we're aiming for for each iteration of this loop. And like I said, this is um, capped at the minimum of uh, the length of our string and 26. So if our string is smaller than 26 characters, obviously we don't need to loop to 26. And we're checking here is uh, the current target character uh, count is it divisible by the length of our string? Uh, in, in order to, for this to work out, for it to be balanced, this condition has to be satisfied. If it's not, we skip to the next iteration. And then we're declaring A and B, which are basically our running sums of the uh, differences above and the differences below. So we're going to loop through basically all of the elements that we're currently concerned with with our vector v, which we determine by taking the minimum of the length of our vector and uh, i here at this point. And then we just calculate our difference, and if the difference is greater than zero, we add it to our above running sum, and if it's less than zero, then we subtract it, which is going to give us a positive amount, because uh, two negatives cancel out to make a positive. And uh, this will give us uh, the running sum of our differences below the n divided by i line. So you can see here we get the difference by taking the current element and subtracting n divided by i by it. And at this point, uh, we're done our inner for loop, and we just uh, reset potentially our answer to be the minimum of the current value of answer and the maximum of a and b. And note that you could actually um, convert the this inner for loop into two calls to accumulate with a couple lambdas. But I implemented that, and although I love using algorithms, I thought it made the code a little bit too unreadable. Uh, so I left it like this uh, just for readability purposes. And once you finish this nested for loop, uh, we can just return our answer, and we're good to go. Um, so hopefully you found this helpful. Uh, the last thing to talk about is the time complexity for this problem, which uh, is going to actually be incorrect from what I have. So I have big O of t times n, but, oh no, actually this is correct because we have t test cases and we are uh, going to be looping through the length of our string. And even though we're sorting here, this is an n log n operation, we're sorting on a constant value sized string uh, or a vector of size 26. So. Uh, and even though we have a nested for loop here, these are both bounded by the constant number 26 as well. So uh, it looks more complex than it actually is, but due to the fact that 26 is a hard-coded number, all we have is t-test cases times um, looping through all the characters in our string, which we have n of.
As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.